This is a katana, which has no connection whatsoever to anything we are going to discuss in this video. And this, is a kastani, a traditional ceremonial sword from ancient Sri Lanka. Decorative too I guess. I mean, look at it. Anyways. This is an Asiatic lion holding the castane. And this is that lion in the world's oldest continuing flag. Yeah yeah you can see it clearly, I'll draw it for you. Before we start the story of this flag, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel, many more videos like this are yet to come and you don't want to miss them, do you? Back to the topic. A lion wielding a castane sword has been the symbol of the Sinhala people for over 2,600 years. This makes the Sri Lankan flag the oldest flag in the world. Huh? Okay okay, I know Denmark and Scotland have the oldest flags when it comes to having the same flag unchanged until now. No need to assassinate me for that. But, if we consider the use of the same old symbol in a country's flag from the ancient times until now, Sri Lanka grabs the prize for the oldest flag concept. Sri Lanka used to be known as Ceylon, Zalan, and Simhale. Simha means lion in Sinhalese, and many other Asian languages. But Pantherleo Sinhalius, the Sri Lankan lion went extinct prior to the arrival of modern humans. So, how did the lion made its way into the national flag? The answer stems long ago to a legend of the lion, when the Sinhalese, the people of Sri Lanka were still in northern India. In the kingdom of Vanga, there was a princess, by the name of Sudhi Pardivi. It was prophesied she would end up loving a beast. Fearing the shame that his daughter will bring to his kingdom, the king of Vanga asked Sukhpardiva to leave the royal palace, disguised as a common. The princess joined a group of travelers headed to the borders of Magadha. On the way, Sinha the lion attacked her group. While others ran away in fear, Sapadavi went after the lion with the prophecy in her mind. The lion, astounded by the bravery of the princess, decided not to eat her. Instead, they got married. Later this couple bore two children, Sinha Barhu, a boy and Sinha Sivali, a girl. It is said that they had both human and lion traits. The lion aspired to take control of the kingdom of Anga. He locked his family in the cave and did not allow them to venture out. However, at the age of 16, Sinha Barhu was able to escape the cave and took his mother and sister with him. The lion was very unhappy, to say the least. Sinherbar who had to defeat him in a battle to stop the lion from killing all the people of Vanga. Pleased with Sinherbar who's actions, the king of Vanga offered his position to Sinherbar who. Remember? It was this king who banished Princess Sapadavi from Vanga. So he is Sinherbar who's grandfather. However, Sinherbar who rejected the initial offer and went to the kingdom of Lala, where he was born in a cave. The people of Lala were also facing the wrath of the lion and they welcomed Sinherbar who and offered him the kingdom in gratitude for slaying the lion. This time, Sinherbar who accepted this offer, and, the offer from his grandfather of Vanga, and became the king of both kingdoms. This kingdom came to be known as Sinherpura, which means the lion city in Sanskrit. Does the Sinhalese in the kingdom of Sinherpura, has any connection with, Singapore, which has the same name. That's a story, for another, what ee -e -e. Ha ha ha, you see what I did there. Anyways, back to the topic, King Sinherbar who had a son named Wijaya. I think Prince Wijaya did not agree with his family customs or ways of life, and he was considered an outcast by King Sinherbar who. I am with Wijaya on this one. Bestiality, killing your own father and then incest, nope. I do not want to be in such a place. So Ijeya had to leave with his followers. I guess he was totally fed up, as he not only moved out of the kingdom, but the whole subcontinent itself, on a ship. He landed in Tamraparni, Sri Lanka where he met Kuvni, the daughter of a local ruler, whom he married. Wejaya's followers also found their own fiancés from the then sparsely populated Sri Lanka. There they established the city kingdom of Tamraparni. Wijaya's people are from the Sinha clan, Wejaya being of lion's blood was called the Sinhala. Some people say, 
as the original inhabitants of Sri Lanka were called Hela, and as they join with the Sinha people from Sinharpura, the new people were called Sinhala, and country became Sinhala. Either way, this led to the establishment of the Sinhala kingdom and the lineage of Sinhala kings who ruled the whole of Sri Lanka. The lion flag depicting Sinha, the lion, was used as the state flag from the start of this kingdom. A language called Sinhala was formed 2,600 years ago and is spoken by 20 million people today. Later named as Sri Lanka, this country has a rich culture, many traditional industries and outstanding literature. Today, in addition to Sinhalese, Sri Lanka has descendants of Indian Tamils, Moors, Malays and Europeans who are descendants of workers or traders who settled when the country was invaded by, yes, you guessed correctly, the British with the help of a Sinhala army chief known as Alipala, so the lion flag of Sri Lanka remains as the oldest flag in the world, I think it's fair to say so though they made some changes in the span of 2600 years. What? So are you saying that their flag is not the oldest? Fine, I don't care, I'm just a doodle hand. Subscribe to me, then I will care.